I am continuing my video series on the fake history of Melbourne. This is part 3, the final part. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous videos, the links are in the description. I recommend watching them all, to get the full picture. I hope you don't get bored. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The Fake History of Melbourne Part 3. The Cathedrals. St. Paul's Cathedral is said to have been completed in 1891. It's impressive how many cathedrals were built in the 1890s around the world, if you believe the official story. Wikipedia informs us that, the cathedral was designed by the English Gothic Revival architect, William Butterfield, and completed in 1891, except for the spires, which were built to a different design, from 1926 to 1932. It is one of Melbourne's major architectural landmarks. The old 1855 map, shows there was a place called St. Paul's Church, at the exact location where they built St. Paul's Cathedral 36 years later. What a coincidence. Historians claim that the original St. Paul's didn't have a spire, but this drawing shows otherwise. The government websites tell us that St. Paul's was built between 1848 and completed in 1852. It took only four years to build. Then it was inexplicably demolished in 1885, only 23 years later. How wasteful. Things being built in the 1850s and demolished a little later makes no sense to me. It sounds like fake history. To add to the confusion, this is an 1858 drawing of another cathedral in Melbourne, St. Patrick's. It looks nearly identical to St. Paul's. This is St. Patrick's today. The two cathedrals are replicas of each other. Historians tell us that one of these was built by Anglicans, St. Paul's, and the other was built by Catholics, St. Patrick's. Imagine that. Look, the Catholics have a really nice church. Let's make one that looks just like it. St. Patrick's was also said to have been completed within a few years in the 1850s. None of this makes much sense. There are actually photos that prove there was a different structure, St. Paul's Church, before St. Paul's Cathedral was there. This is a 1874 photo. This photo was marked 1885, the year it was said to have been demolished. So, I guess my claim that the cathedral was there earlier, is debunked. Not quite. Here's a painting of the new St. Paul's Cathedral, without the spires, in 1889, found on a historical website. Wait, what? 1889. I thought the church was demolished in 1885, and a cathedral was built in 1891. Why is it already completed here in 1889? Swanston Street looks much different than it does in two photos before it. What's going on here? Here's a photo of the same, dated circa 1880. You could argue well, you're not proving fake history, you're proving that these websites are not very exact with their dates. And maybe you're right. The Swanston Street and church we see here is not the one we see in the previous photos. Here's a postcard specifically dated 1885, showing the new cathedral. With photos dates are easy to mistake, but the same is more difficult with postcards. This one can still be found on Google Image Search, but it has been removed from the blog it links to. So, we have 1885 photos of the old church and the new church that was supposedly built years later, at the same location. One of the photo series has to be mistaken or manipulated. They can't both be real. I found no photo of old St. Paul's being demolished or new St. Paul's being constructed. I found only one photo of the alleged construction of St. Patrick's Church in 1861. Why only one angle, and why only one photo? I believe it's a manipulated photo for one reason. If we look back to the 1855 bird's eye view map, you'll find at the precise location of today's St. Patrick's, a large structure titled Roman Catholic Church. Already complete. This photo is of a 1835 survey of downtown Melbourne by a man named Hoddle. Historians say that, well it's called a survey, it was more of a building plan of downtown, as Melbourne hadn't been built yet, as we all know, right? It's interesting that, at the corner of Flinders and Swanston Street, we find six lots taken up by a large structure, exactly as it is today where we find St. Paul's Cathedral taking up approximately the same space. St. Patrick's Cathedral is not within the bounds of downtown, so there is no corresponding feature on this map. 
This, by the way, is St. Francis Church in Melbourne. It still stands today. The church was built in 1841. Yes, it only took one year to build this church. More than a decade before the gold rush. During a time when Melbourne consisted of wilderness. This is an interior view of St. Francis. The Wikipedia page says the foundation stone was laid in 1841, and the first mass was held in 1842. It says absolutely nothing about how the building materials were hauled to the location, from where they were taken, who built it, how and by who the artwork and stained glass was made. Liars are short on specifics. This building was called Independence Church and still stands in Melbourne today. The fact that it still stands in pristine condition today shows there's no need to demolish these things. This photo was taken in 1872. Melbourne boasts many other buildings and churches like this. For the sake of brevity I won't be going into them all. We see no roads and no people, only one horse and a carriage. We are told that the first church here was built in 1839, but then demolished in 1863, to make way for this building in 1866. Put Independence Church Melbourne construction photos into Google, and, as so often, it brings up nothing. It's also weird. The building uses polychrome brickwork, bricks of different color. In Europe, this style was used in the 1100s, so, it's odd to see it in the 1800s wilderness of Australia. The oldest newspaper I was able to find, is the Port Phillips Gazette, published Saturday October 27th in the year 1938. Here's a snippet. I've heard the word new buildings being erected like magic before, when it came to Montana and San Francisco. It's by magic, because they are being excavated, I believe. The newspapers never mention how they were built, who built them, or where the materials were brought from, only that they appear as if by magic. Most remarkable is, that the ad section contains every profession imaginable, except for building and construction workers. Two samples. There were several other ads, but none having anything at all to do with construction, masonry, architecture or design. That, right there, debunks the notion that Melbourne built in the late 1830s. It's easy to prove that the European settlers did not build Melbourne. They did not fund it, they found it. The Parliament Building It doesn't matter which building you examine, each one reveals similar. The building on the left here, is Parliament Building at the end of Bourke Street, beside St. Peter's Church, and in front of St. Patrick's Church. The 1855 Bird's Eye View map, has the following smaller building where today we find the Parliament, item 32. The map tells us that it was a public school in 1855. Yet Wikipedia says the Parliament was already being built there in 1855. I believe both are false. It was neither a public school in 1855, nor was it just being built. I believe it was small on the drawing because it was not yet fully excavated. The paragraph from Wikipedia is bizarre. Why is the dome the most well-known unbuilt feature of the building? Why would something that never existed be well-known? And why was the building never completed? There are exactly zero photos of its construction. But here we learn something very important. The side of the Parliament building was originally a hill. The building is on the slight elevation, as Bourke Street curves slightly upwards, but the building is today not on a hill. Hence, the hill was dug away. This is why I say excavation, not construction. There are many images of Parliament with a dome, something that was supposedly never built, but people remember, for some reason. It was easy for me to prove there was a hill at the side of the Parliament, because all the photos taken from behind Spring Street, the location of the hill, now Parliament down Bork Street, were views from the top. Here's one from 1850. Yes, Bork Street rises toward the Parliament, but there was obviously another elevation from which these photos were taken. Many of the buildings, churches, and cathedrals you see on this page, were allegedly made by the architect Joseph Reed. As so many other superstar architects, Reed died in 1890, when the repurposing of the old world city was complete. I'm not going to go into it here, here's a video debunking Joseph Reed the architect of Melbourne for those who wish to know more. Check the link in the description. I could go on and on about the fake history of Melbourne, but why continue when the point has already been made? It appears many houses in Melbourne were demolished to hide the truth. Fortunately, we have photos of them. 
In Old Melbourne, we find no operative masonry, only speculative masonry. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.